My fellow colleagues, I'm sure you have heard about the coronavirus outbreak and its spread to many countries around the world. You're probably asking yourself, what should we do? Let's talk about that. First, we need to understand the virus. Coronavirus is a large family of viruses which can cause several illnesses in humans. They include the common cold, severe acute respiratory syndrome, also known as SARS, and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS. In December 2019, a new coronavirus was discovered in Wuhan, China. The disease caused by this new virus is called COVID-19. The most common symptoms are fever, cough, and tiredness. These are usually mild. About 80% of those infected will recover without needing any treatment. But older people and those with chronic illness can develop more serious symptoms. And unfortunately, around 2 to 4% of those infected have died. But compared to SARS and MERS, COVID-19 has a much lower mortality rate. When a person who is ill with COVID-19 coughs or sneezes, the virus travels via small droplets from the nose or mouth. People can catch the virus if they happen to be close and breathe in the droplets. The droplets can also land on nearby surfaces. Other people can catch COVID-19 by touching these objects or surfaces and then touching their eyes, nose or mouth. Once the virus enters the body, it will start to multiply. It takes between 1 to 14 days before the infected person starts to show symptoms. During this incubation period, those who are infected do not show any symptoms. They are not infectious. Unfortunately, there are no specific medicines or vaccines for COVID-19 right now. But fortunately, the vast majority of people recover without needing any treatment. Those who are seriously ill will receive supportive treatment like oxygen and respiratory support. The vast majority of them recover. So should I worry? So far, there has not been any reported cases in Kazakhstan. If you have not visited an area where COVID-19 is spreading and you have not been in close contact with someone who is ill with COVID-19, your chances of getting the disease is very low. What are we doing in KPO right now? We have ordered the necessary medical supplies and most of them have already arrived. Our doctors and nurses are currently practicing the medical protocols for this disease and they are getting ready. I have shared several potential future scenarios with operations and projects. Together with IT, supply chain and HR, we have defined our actions should those scenarios happen. We are also working very closely with Aksai Hospital and the local public health authorities to make sure that our actions are coordinated. Most importantly, we are complying with government requirements like quarantine and home isolation for our employees who have travelled from affected countries. We are also following government recommendations to minimise travel and public gatherings. So what can each of us do to protect ourselves? First, Observe personal hygiene. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Avoid touching your face unnecessarily. Second, if you are unwell, please stay at home and call your doctor. Do not come to the workplace. In addition to spreading illness, you may also create anxiety amongst your colleagues. When you cough or sneeze, cover your mouth and nose with your elbow or tissue. Then, Dispose the used tissue immediately. Third, if you see someone who is unwell at work, maintain a distance of at least one meter and respectfully ask him or her to seek medical advice. If you suspect a surface is contaminated, clean it with a simple disinfectant. And then don't forget to wash your hands. These simple steps do not take much effort. But if we all do them, they go a long way towards containing the spread of the virus. There are some misconceptions about this virus. Myth number one, the virus is airborne and can spread via building HVAC systems. This is not true. The virus travels via droplets. The droplets are heavier than air. They cannot travel via HVAC systems. 
Myth number two, you can easily catch the virus from someone who does not have any symptoms. This is also not true. People without symptoms are either in the incubation period or they don't have the virus in the first place. In both cases, the chances of them infecting you is almost zero. Myth number three, everyone should wear a mask. This is not true. Only those who are ill or who are caring for the ill needs a mask. If you're not sick, wearing a mask does not help. In fact, it can create a false sense of security and make you less diligent with the other protective measures. It also adds to the worldwide shortage of masks and deprive people who really need them. Myth number four, goods manufactured in China can spread the virus. This is not true. The virus does not live long on surfaces, especially after it has been exposed to different temperatures and conditions. I'm confident of the medical outcome of this outbreak. Most of our colleagues and their family members should remain well. Of those who do become ill, it should be mild. And most should recover without any treatment. But the real test is to our cohesion and psychological resilience. Fear and anxiety are natural human reactions. We all want to protect ourselves and our families. But fear can do more harm than the virus itself. It can make us panic and do things that makes matters worse, like spreading rumors or blaming particular groups for the outbreak. Instead, we should take courage and show our care for each other and see through this stressful time together. Thank you. <laughs>